<laughs> no, I think architecture could be an autonomous discipline. I think that as an autonomous discipline, it could be, con be critical. The whole idea of work, whether it's painting, music, etc., is to produce a critical climate of being able to examine culture, whether that culture is uh, modern culture, whether it's 19th century, whether it's Iranian, California, etc. I don't, I don't think that Bob Venturi and I, I think Bob Venturi and I were part of an attempt to, to open America, U.S. to a modern culture. Part of modernity, as it's understood, is the possibility of autonomy. And whether, first of all, whether we ever achieved a modernity is a question. And my question about that is the fact that w one of the problems of architecture was the idealization of technology and function. In other words, uh, the new technologies and the new functions could be somehow uh, estimated in architecture. That idealization is precisely what modernity was against. In other words, the 19th century of Kant and Hegel, 20th century philosophy was a, a, an attempt to overcome mm -hmm. ideal. So architecture was caught in a situation where uh, while it was able to produce a modernity, that modernity, unlike painting, music, etc., was suffused with idea, an idealized notion coming from Kant and Hegel. So the possibility of autonomy, I, th I, I, I think architecture could be an autonomous discipline, um, but it has to overcome the idea of idealization. It has to overcome function in a sense. In other words, it has to overcome meaning. It has so many things it has to overcome that I'm, I'm not in a sense pursuing an idea of autonomy, number one. Uh, I'm pursuing actually an idea of atemporality, that is nothing to do with the zeitgeist, nothing to do with avant-garde, etc. And I'm right now editing a book that we're doing on the subject of lateness and the late in from Ordon, Ordon, Adorno's critique of Beethoven. So um, I'm more interested, I mean the Palladio Virtuel is one of the books that I've just recently done, I'm working on a book on Alberti. Uh, there are several building projects that are going up right now. Um, but basically, uh, the theme of autonomy, let's say, is, I think it's exhausted, right? I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not interested in pursuing it. Mm -hmm. okay. And I wouldn't know if you said to me, what could be autonomy in architecture? Well, it's hard to know what could be autonomy. Mm -hmm. Not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I understand about the, the crisis. The crisis is, first of all, more in the schools because I think pedagogy has lost, it has become enamored with uh, technology, with the digital, uh, I mean, Mario Carpo's books on the first and second, second digital age. And it seems to me that it, architecture is supposedly, as far as I can see, a resistant uh, form of criticality, let's say, resistant to homogenization, to uh, uh, power, etc. That, And hence what happened in Iran with my visit. So. Um, I think we have lost the relationship between history and theory in terms of digital composition, let's say. We, we have no idea of how those things can be worked together.
and it's in the schools. I mean, the the pedagogy. I mean, look, Yale University is interested in the sciences and technology. Uh, they are really uninterested in the culture of architecture, etc. Uh, but that's not just Yale University where I teach. It's many other universities, um, and the idea that this is to be animated by history and theory is uh, a big problem. So the students and the teachers, when they come into a school, let's say in the first year of uh, the core of architecture, what what do they design? They, I mean, in other words, what are the, the restrictions, what are the in inputs that you give a student a design project? No one knows. I don't know, uh, and so I I think that so the culture is in a crisis. Uh, the culture is in a crisis, certainly politically in this country, certainly politically in Italy, certainly politically in Hungary and Poland. The European Union is in crisis. Um, we're doing a project in Turkey where right now it's stopped because the Turkish money is devalued by almost 50 percent. Um, so I, I think there's a general cultural milieu uh, problem, let's say, mm -hmm. and it's not just architecture. I also believe, though, that society and culture will out. That is, eventually, it's like this, it goes up and down. <clears throat> we had a great period of modern architecture between 1914 and 1939. Since 1939, there were, you know, evidences of the fact that architecture was accepted by the society, uh, but it wasn't the architecture that Le Corbusier and others had in mind. Uh, it was an architecture devoted to the middle class and comfort, and etc. So, I, right now, I think that architecture is, let's say, in a hibernation. When it will come back, I don't know. Maybe it will be by people like yourself and others doing projects like you're doing. Uh, it's certainly a hopeful sign. I myself teach Palladio, I teach Piranesi. Look at the books here. I teach Lataroi. I teach things of the 16th century and 19th century, etc. Um, I don't teach Tom Main. I don't teach Frank Gehry. I don't teach uh, the, the people of today. Um, I don't teach Eric Owen Moss. I don't teach Hernan. I like all those people, and they're all friends of mine, but I mean, I don't teach them. If you were to come to my class, uh, my first lecture is on Brunelleschi, right? My last lecture is on Piranesi. Um, so, I mean, I open the students to a critical analysis of Northern Renaissance in Italy. Right? It's not history, it's theory. Uh, it teaches them how to look at architecture, to how looking at architecture is different for an architect than it is from a client, etc. Mm -hmm. And I teach very fundamental stuff. Uh, it's not very exotic, uh, but it's also not very popular. Uh, I mean, popular stuff are computers and and model building and printing and all that, but, you know. And I say, what's that got to do with architecture? It has to do with other kinds of things. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, I enjoy doing architecture because it's a difficult, it, it, you have to overcome function. You have to overcome meaning. You have to overcome being uh, to produce a critical environment. And to overcome these things, uh, it's a lot of work. Um, and that's why I like it, because it's not easy. I, it's not just sitting with a piece of paper, making a sketch and having somebody build it. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult. Uh, I think 
it's to me one of the most challenging disciplines precisely because of the in order to get to zero you have to overcome a lot uh, certainly you have to overcome phenomenology all right I mean there's a real problem you have to overcome the idea of experience do you think that James Joyce when he wrote uh, Ulysses or Finnegan's Wake cared about what the experience of the reader is absolutely not he wrote what the hell he wanted to write whether you had an experience reading it or not was irrelevant to him I'm totally irrelevant as to what people experience when they come to my buildings they either get what I'm talking about or they don't uh, but whether they do or they don't it doesn't affect what I do uh, and I'm stimulated enough by what I think are the projects that I want to do that I know that I don't have enough time to do it. First of all, I haven't written. I'm the only architect. If you take Ben Turi, Rossi, Kulhas, all those guys have written their book. I haven't written. I've written a lot of books, but not the book that says makes the answer you want. That says, what is architecture? Formal as an abstract, conceptual uh, study. My professor, Professor Leslie Martin, a very exalted man, wanted something else. And he inserted into my thesis the work of Alto and Wright, okay? And I wanted Corbu and Tarani and, and Los, etc. And I didn't realize at the time that what the professor was inserting into my thesis was the northern phenomenological approach of Norbert Schultz, of Johanni Palisma, of, of all of the northern uh, contingent, which is all about phenomena, okay, and experience. And so I was corrupted early on without realizing that what I didn't like was exactly what, we're, I mean, I was at Cambridge and I realized why Colin Rowe had to leave Cambridge after two years was that he was violently against phenomena, okay? Uh, and he chose the wrong place to come. I came to study with Colin and I realized that I was at the wrong place. Um, so to me, the great bugaboo of architecture is overcoming this stuff. Sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. That, that is, people think of architecture as things. And I think of architecture as voids. And, uh, you know, I, it's, but I would say there are two things. One, it's not modern versus postmodern or digital versus post-digital or Baroque versus Renaissance. The history of architecture is calibrated in, in a pair of oppositions which are not necessarily dialectical. That is abstraction on the one hand and phenomena on the other, okay? You either are an abstractionist and you think about that and you produce things which are abstract, or you're a phenomenologist, uh, you produce experience. And it's not Venturi is a postmodern and I'm modern. No, no, he is a phenomenologist, I'm an abstractionist. And those are the poles. And they always have been. And, you know, uh, Wright is a phenomenologist. Uh, I mean, and you can go right down. Alto is a phenomenologist. Um, I going to falling water, oh, what a waste, of, for me, a waste of time. Because there's nothing abstract. It's all there. Uh, and to me, criticality is about not being all there. And so someday I'll write that book. Uh, it's important to do. I mean, I truly believe that it's not a question of whether you're Baroque 
or Renaissance or Rococo or modern or postmodern or post-digital or anything. It's, are you an abstractionist or are you a phenomenologist? And thus is the, the, the cut line of architecture. You are one or the other and that's all, you can't help it. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, mo a lot of my friends, what's are interesting is they think they're abstractionists, like Stephen Hall is a phenomenologist, okay? Can't help himself, wants desperately to be an abstractionist, but he can't be. <laughs>